It's funny, really, the role media and film can have as we think about places around the world. I think about the movie Casablanca. It gives us this insight into romance and love. It makes me want to go there. Or Las Vegas. It's portrayed in countless films about adventure and risk. And then there's Fargo. And that's where I'm from. And many people know about the movie the Coen brothers gave us called Fargo. And even a couple days ago when I said, oh, I'm from Fargo, people literally laugh. But it's not funny when you live there. It's not funny when your community is portrayed as, some, as a place that nothing happens, that it's cold, that there's barrenness. And it's really frustrating as a young person growing up in a place where people say that there's the politicians say out loud, there's a brain drain. All the best and brightest are leaving for the coasts. Or there's no creative talent. Where young people are telling themselves they have to leave, there's nothing to do here. I remember traveling when I was in high school, and I would say to somebody in a bigger city, um, yeah, I'm from Fargo, and I was really excited, and they're like, oh, do you still live in a teepee? Or they'd say, I would say, oh yeah, I'm from Fargo, and they're like, oh, have you heard of the internet? And each time that would happen, my self-esteem dropped, and it actually hurt. It actually hurt because my great-great-grandfather pioneered this area. And to be laughed at growing up every time you see somebody from another place, it was pretty painful. It was pretty miserable. So I left as soon as I could. I went to the University of Minnesota, a community uh, or a school of 50,000 students. I started an organization with some really good friends called Students Today Leaders Forever, spent seven years building the NGO. After burning out, I wandered around the world to the great cities. I went to London. I went to uh, Melbourne, Australia. I was in Hanoi. I was in uh, Bangkok. I got a chance to be in the Lakes District of the UK, walked across Spain. And for 11 months, I consumed culture. I sat there passively reacting to what others were doing, taking photographs, going to the museums, and I didn't feel very connected. I didn't feel part of something special. That, that experience of consumerism just didn't really work for me. And so I went home. I went home with the longing to know my barista, to get to know my neighbor. I went home with the longing to create community. I went home with this idea that I could create the city that I wanted to live in. And so the first project we worked on was TEDx Fargo. We found four speakers to come and talk, an artist, a doctor, an entrepreneur, and somebody that worked in egg. And over 100 people piled into a little art gallery, and we started to talk about ideas. We got really excited about it, and so four months later, we did another TEDx Fargo. And this time, we had eight speakers, and we crammed into the same venue, and the ideas were spurring. Three months later, we did a third event, City 2.0. What would the future of our city look like? And this small group of 100 people that kept coming to our, uh, to our events started to say, let's take action. Let's do something great in our community. In our last event, we had 600 people there, and it was fantastic. And it was ran by volunteers, people that wanted to contribute. This is a group of our volunteers from the last day. Um, there's over 50 of them. We'd get up at, for meetings at 7 a.m. It was fantastic because there was no roles, there was no titles. The high school students sat next to the superintendent of his schools and they were on the same team. We had artists and doctors, creators and entrepreneurs. And we worked together to celebrate the bright spots of our community. During this whole process of contributing to my community, I've learned three basic principles that I'd love to share with you today. Maybe you can apply them. The first of which is to create world-class experiences. A lot of us have been to really boring events in hotel convention centers, eating chicken and soft vegetables, hearing boring speakers like me that haven't practiced. Um, but what we've learned is that world-class experiences start in world-class spaces. I'm inspired by an entrepreneur in our community that's built the Kilbourne Group that takes old historic buildings like this and turns them into beautiful places for students to study. This is our, um, architecture, or our, yeah, our architecture building in downtown Fargo. He takes buildings like this that are underutilized and he, re, he upcycles them, creating unique experiences, bringing in um, reclaimed materials from farms and native spaces in our community, and he turns them into great environments. This entrepreneur, Doug, is committing to Fargo to be the best place to live, to work, to play, to study. He does it through honoring the past, having gratitude for the present, and hopefully inspiring the future. His son, Joe, got together with a group of friends and found an old alley that nobody wanted to go to. You know those alleys that are just gross, where you see vomit, you see all this crazy stuff? And he said, what would it look like if we turned it into a beautiful space for families to enjoy? And so they hired an artist, and then and, and she painted the, uh, the sidewalk all sorts of different colors. 
They brought in crafters and artists to, to showcase their work, creating a kid-friendly environment. They threw a concert in the middle of the night in this back alley with the best musicians in town. And it was just done by these 20-somethings. They didn't, they didn't get asked to do it. They didn't ask for permission. They just put their hand up and said, I want to contribute to my community. I want to do something special. I'm also inspired by my buddy Jake. Jake's now 24. When he was at uni, he couldn't get a job at Microsoft. He couldn't get a job at any of the other tech companies because his GPA wasn't good enough. So he said, I think mobile phones are pretty interesting. I'm going to start a mobile app company. And so he did. He started Myriad Mobile with some buddies, and now they have 35 employees. And they said, let's make Fargo the hub of mobile technology. They created Midwest Mobile Summit. They brought entrepreneurs and mobile app developers from around the region together to learn from one another. On the stage there are some of Jake's competitors, and they're talking about ideas that they can expand an industry. They brought in some of the top teachers, like Mike from Minneapolis, to explain in deep de detail how LiveFront is making a difference for their clients. But they had an awesome experience. They found the world's youngest yo-yo champion to come and perform at their event. And then they brought in a hoop dancer. And she, she in, in, uh, entertained the group. And these folks were creating a community. And the event is getting bigger and bigger. They didn't ask for permission. They just said, we're going to do this for our community. We are going to contribute. We've also learned a lot about building platforms. Chip Heath, in his book, Switch, talks about creating platforms and celebrating the bright spots in your community. So we've applied that model in our community. Mark, uh, he owns an art gallery, created Corks and Canvas. He got over 20 different retail shops downtown Fargo to open up their venue on a Thursday night. They have an artist designing or creating in their space, similar to what we have here. And then they serve wine. And people walk around and they explore the art. And they're engaging our community, helping the community understand what the artist process is all about. And it's a ton of fun. People from all the region come to Corks and Canvas. I'm also inspired by our friend's family health care, a clinic in town that said, we want to set the stage for innovation. And so they got 200 people to cram into this room last summer, and they brought 15 innovators, doctors, health care providers, administrators, technologists, and students, to share for three minutes each their idea on how they could transform health care. Well, out of this event, this simple platform, Mert from Chicago was there, who, who, who's building SwipeSense, which monitors when doctors use hand sanitation technology, um, partnered with Family Healthcare and Intelligent Insights in our community, and now my grandma has a higher chance of staying alive longer because of an event where this technology is being applied in my community. They created a platform, and now they're applying it in our community. I'm also inspired by Ashley. Ashley, she runs Unglued Craft Fair, or uh, Unglued, um, Unglued, which is a store downtown that celebrates the crafting community, high-end crafts. This last winter, she had 100 crafters um, come and present their work at an art gallery. Over 3,000 people showed up on a cold, miserable day in Fargo last winter, and she's changing their lives. She's increasing their self-esteem. She's giving them a platform to share their work. We also, Arthur Ventures, our venture capital firm in town, um, after their conference, they hosted an event where they brought uh, their top two speakers, and they had them speak at the, for the community. So this is uh, Mike Cannon Brooks, one of the top software entrepreneurs in the world. He runs Atlassian, um, st standing next to Rich Carlgard, the publisher of Forbes, who happens to be from the great state of North Dakota. And they shared their ideas on entrepreneurship and business with 800 people, many of which were students that came and enjoyed and the room was full. Arthur Ventures shared their speakers with the community platform to inspire creativity, to inspire bolder thinking. We know that we have to connect people. Communities really matter. Some of my buddies uh, run a little project called Design X, where they want to uplift the, the design community. And so they created a little project called Cropped. Um, if you've seen the TV show Chopped, it's based on that idea, where two different designers compete against each other head-to-head -head with 15 minutes using different design elements, such as Comic Sans or pieces of very unique um, images, and they commute, uh, compete. And now 100 people are showing up at their events on a regular basis for free. They're contributing to our community. And it's just three buddies that want to raise the profile of design in our community. Another group that I'm super inspired by is, is, is a project called Brunchin'. Uh, it's a gathering at 10 p.m. on a Thursday night. Uh, great drinks are served. At 11 o'clock, food is served. And at midnight, we have a toast. An artist designs a table each and every time at, a lo at the local art gallery, and we dine at midnight. We connect people, and my role is to sit people next to the folks that they want to sit by. 
bringing in people from all around the region, serving foods that are accessible. We almost exclusively serve vegan food now. And we, we help in, helping our community get to know each other, creating an, an atmosphere where people can connect. This last one was a couple weeks ago, and it was Alice in Wonderland. Um, it was a bit crazy, a bit mystical, but we wanted to show off our ballet that is performing Alice in Wonderland this April. This simple gathering where we join at 10 for drinks, food at 11, and a toast at midnight has changed the way people see our community. We've helped people connect. We've engaged them with the local artists. It's just been fantastic. Another project I love is that we realized that the best parties in town were either on the uni campuses um, or, or with, uh, with charities. And I'm a little bit old, so it's a little weird to go to the university parties, but I think it'd still be fun. And can't really always afford the charity events. So we created a Parties Through Time series. Um, if, you, if you know, James Gatz is the 14th wealthiest fictional character of all times, according to Forbes. He's also known, known as the Great Gatsby, and he's from North Dakota in the book. And so we had a Welcome Home James Gatsby party where we got all our friends to dress up and celebrate just because. We weren't raising money, we were just having fun for ourselves. And then last year, the, the local newspaper said, you guys can have a Mad Men party at our, at our office. And so we got all dressed up, and people were having a ton of fun. And we did it just because. This event was ran by six friends, and we learned a valuable lesson. You don't have an open bar tab, because we lost thousands of dollars. <laughs> But it was a lot of fun, and we're doing it just because. There's no point. People are like, why are you doing this? Because we want to create the city that we want to live in, and it's working. We started to look at our entrepreneurial community. How can we support the risk takers? And so we threw this little project called Startup Drinks, where we'd all go to the same bar. I emailed over 100 people, and seven dudes showed up. We talked about starting businesses online using eBay to sell Legos when we were teenagers, and it was miserable um, because there was no diversity of thought. But we kept at it, and so we threw a startup weekend, a 54-hour competition um, where t individuals came on a weekend, they presented ideas, teams formed around those ideas, they worked all weekend, the guy in the top right did not sleep or shower the whole weekend, which is a bit weird, but that's great, um, and people problem solved. And during that weekend, a community was formed. And in our second startup weekend, we had 100 participants and over 100 people volunteering. People flew in from Washington, D.C., San Francisco. They came in from Iowa, Omaha, to celebrate and be part of this weekend. It wasn't necessarily just about starting companies. It was actually about creating a community of risk takers. Now at our startup drinks, we draw over 100 people that are coming and sharing ideas, teaching each other. We launched a new project out of the Kauffman Foundation out of Kansas City uh, called One Million Cups, where every week one entrepreneur or two entrepreneurs get six minutes to present their company. And then as a community, we ask them 25 minutes worth of questions, trying to expose them uh, to blind spots or areas that we could help. The final question is each week is, how can the community help your idea move faster? Our entrepreneurial community is taking bigger risks. When a friend's company recently had to shut down, we called their employees and said, how can we help? How can we make sure that you have a job? How do we celebrate what some claim is failure and we see as a new way of, of learning? Our community is changing. And it's, it, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Um, then, these crazy people, Melissa and A.J. Leone from New York, who are nomadic, they travel around the world, they brought 60 friends to Fargo from all around the world to come and experience our community. And these 60 friends came and had an amazing experience. They held a conference in, in our community. They didn't invite any of us. They used our community as a campus. They had a ton of fun, and they held up this big mirror, big mirror back to us in Fargo, told us one thing we needed, which was we are okay. We are creative. We are special. We are fun. And it was just one of those amazing experiences. They gave us a gift by showing up in our community. So then this group of friends right here, they got together and said, well, let's invite the entire world to dinner in our community. So we created Dinner Ties, where we literally want to invite all of you and the 7 billion people in the world to come on our website, tell us you want to attend, and then we're going to host you in our homes. So this is Hugh from Sioux Falls. He came in, and he had dinner with Ashley and Justin. And two college kids were home, and Cam had dinner in their home. So it's kind of like an Airbnb or a couch surfing model, but we, uh, we wanted to invite the entire world into our home um, to have dinner. And in all of this, what I've learned is that it's my life, it's my country, it's my world, and it's up to me to create community. It's up to me to create the city that I want to live in. And I want to flip that back to you. I want to ask you to think about, what are you waiting for? Are you waiting for your government to create the greatest country to live in? 
Are you, worried, worried, are you waiting for your neighbor or the business owner? Are you going to call upon yourself? Are you going to start projects that make a difference? Are you going to create world-class experiences? Are you going to build platforms to celebrate success? Are you going to connect real people, both locally and internationally? That's what's happening in Fargo. I love my community. I love my city. The Cohen brothers were wrong. It isn't a place of barrenness. It isn't a place of cold. It's a place of the most amazing people in the world. And I'm glad I get to call it home. Thank you. Thank you.